troops in Iraq, their job, of course, is to complete the mission. Their hope is to come home. For some, the journey back is full of setbacks and unwelcome surprises. For some, they wind up homeless. A small number of Iraq, Iraq and Afghanistan vets are turning up homeless these days. Their veterans uh, just return back. Maybe they live even near you, living on the streets. Tonight, they're going to meet one of them. There are two things National Guard Corporal Joe Ricaldo never dreamed he'd see. The sun setting over Iraq and the sun setting over his 98 Plymouth, the car he now calls home. I never thought, like, after the ball was dropped, you're out here in this parking lot. I never thought I'd be here. You know? The long road to get here, a parking lot in Jones Beach, New York, began two years ago in Iraq. So you were in the sling here? Yeah, actually in that top piece, uh -huh. gun turret. Joe was the gunner in this Humvee when his vehicle took a sharp turn and flipped. His body was nearly crushed underneath. I just remember I couldn't move anything. I couldn't breathe. I was bleeding. You know, I just felt blood all over me, my face. And I squeezed out the words, you better get a medevac fast, because I thought that was it. Joe suffered traumatic brain injury, broke his back, all his ribs, and shattered his left arm. He was unconscious for days. They told my sister they were going to fly her out there. I wasn't going to make it. But to the surprise of his own doctors, he survived. Over many months, doctors pieced him back together, using metal rods and screws to fuse his spine and metal plates to hold his shattered arm together. So you got a lot of metal in you. A lot of metal. Could probably build a small Eiffel Tower with a hardware. Yeah. <laughs> Today, every step hurts, but Joe remembers when he could run on this beach for miles. Me and my friend, we used to go eight miles that way. Joe can't lift more than 10 pounds, so he couldn't go back to being an auto mechanic. Instead, he took a job with the National Guard patrolling Penn Station in New York. He says he lasted six months before landing in the hospital again with back pain and a bone infection. And at that point, I gave up. I simply gave up. I know I can't work. I have no income coming in. I'm finished. What he had coming in was $218 a month from a disability check. So it wasn't long before Joe, at age 50, ended up homeless. This is my clothes closet here. The trunk is your closet? Yeah, forgive me, the maid never showed up. <laughs> I'm on a fire when I get a hold of <laughs> Joe says he's looked for part-time work with no luck. Hey, Joe. Oh. Hey, Bob. How oh. are you? Oh. He has one sister and a few friends who have yeah. offered to help, but he's too proud to accept it and too proud to stay in a shelter. So he spends most days alone, a stranger in his hometown of Hicksville, New York, on Long Island. One possible reason for his withdrawal, Joe was recently diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. I just don't belong. I don't feel I belong anywhere around here. Joe is one of an estimated 600 homeless veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan. That's not many compared with the 200,000 or so from all wars who are currently homeless. But these vets are showing up even more quickly than after Vietnam, a war that left nearly 70,000 homeless, an even greater number than died in combat. If the experience with Vietnam is any predictor, I am very worried about the numbers of, of, of homeless veterans or people at risk of being homeless who are returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. The Department of Veterans Affairs is working to avoid a repeat of what happened after Vietnam. There was a delayed effect uh, with a lot of veterans after Vietnam. We know that. We've, we've studied it. We've learned from that. And so that's why we're trying to intervene now. Uh, right away. The VA spent more than a billion dollars on homeless programs last year, but some veterans still fall through the cracks. Misclassified, as the VA now says Joe was, unable to receive full compensation. You feel sort of like you got lost in the system? Absolutely. Lost. I'm still lost. I'm still dizzy for what happened. And sick and tired of fighting for benefits. Last month, though, Joe's persistence began to pay off. His disability status was raised from 20 percent to 60 percent or $873 a month. But as Joe puts it, in New York, that is just enough to either afford an apartment or eat, not both. I'm disgusted. And it's not because I'm a veteran or a soldier or somebody who served. That means nothing. You know, we choose to go. No one forces us to go. I'm just saying, you should be treated like a human being, for God's sakes. It's all I want. And then I think about the other veterans from other wars, and they're still fighting to this day. It's just, it's horrible. And I had to live it. It was only after CNN made repeated inquiries about this case that the VA called to inform us that Joe would finally be granted full 100% disability status, retroactive to March and worth $2,600 a month, meaning he may actually get to sleep in a real bed very soon. When we called Joe with the news, he said he'll believe it when he gets the first check.
The war in Iraq may have broken his body, but it's the fight here at home that's come close to breaking his spirit. Well, on Monday, we'll have more stories from veterans to tell in our special edition of 360 coming home.